Let's talk about the field of view and the resolution. I would like to talk about those two kind of together because they're related. So let's say that this is your sample. Thus, this is your sample size. Then if you have a detector here and x-rays go through the sample like this, then this rectangular area is your field of view or FOV. This is the area that gets projected on the detector. And as you can see, the FOV is not necessarily the same thing as the sample size. The FOV can be either smaller or larger than the sample size. And when your FOV is small, generally speaking, your voxel size is small as well. That means you have high resolution. When the FOV becomes large, your voxel size becomes large as well, meaning you have to compromise on the resolution. Sometimes people say that, well, I want to scan a large FOV, but I do not want to compromise on the resolution. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, and I'm going to explain why. If you have a one millimeter cube you want to scan, and you use one micron voxel size, your file size is going to be about two gigabytes with a 16-bit grayscale. And that's not bad at all. It's manageable. You can do analysis, whatever you want to do with it. Then you decide to go up to 100 millimeter cube, but you're not going to compromise on the voxel size. Then your file size is going to be two petabytes. Two petabytes is 2,000 terabytes. And that is just too big. You can't even save this file on the terabyte drive. And this is why you have to compromise on the voxel size. If you go to five microns, it's 16 terabytes, probably still too big. You go to 25 microns, maybe eight bit for grayscale, it's 64 gigabytes. Now you can probably save this on the drive, no problem, but you might have a hard time analyzing it. So 50 microns voxel size is probably more reasonable. Your file size is now eight gigabytes. As you can see from this table, you have to compromise on the resolution and use larger voxel size when your FOV becomes large, just to keep the file size under control. 